Welcome back to Journey with Jen. Today, I'm going to share a rather personal story with you about how I acquired my first horse. If you're new to this channel, thank you so much for stopping in where we talk about all things natural horsemanship. Let's get to it. I grew up on the West Coast where I spent a lot of time at the beach. My favorite activities were building sand castles and playing with the sand crabs. Once in a while, I'd see off in the distance some people that had brought their horses to the beach to ride. Whenever the horses showed up, I stopped whatever it was I was doing. The ocean itself paled in comparison to the awe and wonder I felt when I saw these magnificent creatures and the beautiful relationship they had with their humans. Looking at my own footprints in the sand, I felt the stark contrast of my own isolation, the lack of connection of a unique relationship of pure harmony and beauty that I had seen. I'd seek out the footprints of the horses and walk in them, feeling the spirit connection of the horses I had just seen. Walking in these footprints barefoot on the beach, I understood even at this young age that I was in the same space at a different time that these horses were occupying. Walking in these hoofprints, somehow the ground felt more solid beneath my feet. The thing I would ponder was always the same when I'd walk in these hoofprints, and that was the very nature of time. Every hoofprint seemed to hold the past, the present, and a hope for my future. It wasn't just the horses that I had seen running down the beach that I was tracking. I was actually tracking a life with horses, the connection and the harmony that I saw, a different life. Time was a very strange thing. As I looked down to see my footprints next to these tracks in the sand, I knew inevitably that a wave would come and wash them away. There I'd stand, still, looking out at the horizon, my little plastic sandcastle shovel in my hand. I stood alone with this wise and ancient ocean, knowing she was my only witness as I stood in the eye of this storm of emotions. At this time in my life, the horses were always so near to my heart, and at the same time, they felt just out of reach. Another way I connected with horses during this time was through books. I started a collection of horse books and also started drawing them. Many years passed for me this way, and over time I felt like my wish for owning a horse might as well be a wish to own a castle in the clouds. By the age of 14, what I was experiencing had developed into more like a despair or a depression in hindsight. Once in a while, I'd hear a story about a horse accident, either being stepped on, a horse reared up, or bucked somebody off at a local stable for riding. Their stories were always catastrophic, earth shattering, cataclysmic, and somehow I knew that it wasn't the horse's fault. Something had gone awry with the approach, with the interaction, the lack of harmony. But of course, it was never the horse's fault. The horse was always just going to be a horse. I also knew that if ever given the chance, my interactions would not end this way. I would be more sensitive to the needs of the horse, to their energetic signature, and to the harmony that they were also seeking. I had no concept at the time of what an empath was, but I knew all too well the pain of living as one and not knowing what made me so different. When you have no off switch and you feel everything and everyone around you be that plant, animal, person, object. Then one day it hit me. I realized that someday I wouldn't be a helpless child anymore. I looked around me and saw all of the adults making decisions and deciding which direction their life would go, what it would look like, what it would contain, and I made a decision that changed everything. For the first time, I felt a ray of real hope, real empowerment. I knew that someday, no matter how long it took, no matter how hard I had to work or what I had to do, I would have horses in my life. This was a choice that I was making, not then, but today. I would have a horse, and that was that. In an attempt to take this idea and bring it into the tangible physical realm, 
I took a shoebox and walked around my house and found anything and everything I could use with a horse, my future horse. I picked up a hairbrush, I picked up a, a cleaning item, a sponge, and I put them in the box and I told myself, one day I will use these items on my own horse. Then I made a mistake that I will never forget. <laughs> in my excitement, in my naivety, I ran to my sister who knew everything about me, that I shared everything with, and I said, guess what? I'm getting a horse. I'm really getting a horse. And of course, she didn't understand the profound shift that had just taken place in my life, in my spirit. We were both young, and she knocked down the whole idea. But I knew better, and I learned from that that I would have to keep this to myself moving forward, that no one would understand this, and I would just keep it to myself. And so I did. For the next two weeks, I felt a deep relief in my spirit knowing that my life would be different, that I had the power of choice and I had acted on it and this would happen and my grief started to subside. In only two weeks, my father came home after teaching art classes to give me the news that one of his students was giving us a quarter horse filly. After receiving this unbelievable news for several days, I doubted what had actually happened and I had had so many dreams that I had woken from of finally having a horse, all different colors, one at a time. Uh, I would go to my father and ask him, hey, did you really say that? And day after day he would tell me, it's not a dream, yes, you're going to have a horse. And this taught me a very profound lesson. As human beings, we are powerful co-creators, or shall I say, we have the potential to be. The formula looks something like this. Faith plus action over time manifests physical reality. As a direct consequence of the years of pain I had endured, wanting but never having a horse, I had a deep gratitude for what was about to happen as I started on my actual journey with horses in my life. Although I only owned my first horse for four years before going to college, over a hundred horses came into my life in different capacities because of her and all that she had taught me about horses. I had gained invaluable skills that I use to this day. I was 14 when I got my first horse and had the best summer of my life learning about her and all that she needed from me to do her justice. I've ridden many horses on many beaches since then, many of them my own, and I feel blessed more and more every day that I have to spend with these wonderful, wonderful animals. I had stumbled upon some spiritual laws but they work whether you use them on accident or on purpose. They work for everyone. That's why they're spiritual laws. When we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change right in front of us. And that's pretty cool. <laughs>